Donald Trump Jr. tweeted this out, and he's not wrong. I don't know that Jack Smith is this reactionary. I mean, I think he's been on course to bring these charges for a long time. But tell me what you think of this. Um, It's been circulating on Twitter. It was shared by Jr. June 7th, the FBI releases that document to Congress allowing um, them to see, Congress to see that uh, 1023 form alleging that the Bidens took a $10 million bribe from Burisma. The very next day, Jack Smith indicted Trump in the Mar-a-Lago case. July 26th, Hunter Biden goes into court and rejects that sweetheart plea deal after it was it fell apart after the DOJ tried to give him blanket immunity from all future prosecutions. The very next day, Jack Smith added new charges against Trump in the Mar-a-Lago case. July 31st, Hunter Biden's former business partner testifies to Congress that Joe Biden was in on over 20 calls with his son's business partners, and that Burisma execs pressured them to fire the prosecutor, which Joe Biden then did. The very next day, Jack Smith indicts Trump again, this time for January 6th. When you see it laid out like that, Julie, it's pretty chilling. Well, this sort of goes back to what I was saying, Megan, about Jack Smith not wanting these to go to trial before the election, because this is the perfect foil for any bad news coming out of not just the Biden campaign, but Democrats in general. I mean, this is going to be the squirrel, the pivot uh, for uh, the next, what, 14 or 15 months. And so this is a very useful tool. Let's keep in mind who Jack Smith is also. Um, He worked at DOJ for years. He worked alongside Lisa Monaco for at least two and a half years when Jack Smith was head of the Public Integrity Unit and Lisa Monaco was an assistant attorney general. They were together at Maine Justice for two and a half years. Well, who's Lisa Monaco? She is now the deputy attorney general. She's the one who really launched the both of these investigations into Donald Trump, which were then taken over by Jack Smith in November, a special counsel. So he has a long history tied to he worked in Obama's DOJ from August of 2010 until February of 2015. So he is not some independent prosecutor, Megan, as you know, who was just plucked out of, you know, the middle of of the hinterlands to take over this case. He is a political figure. He understands exactly what his mission is. And it's to your point, what you just said and what uh, what Don Jr. just posted. It is to use this as a foil, as a ruse, as a diversion for all of the bad news that will be coming out about the Biden uh, family crime racket. Mm. And I mean realistically, this is going to dominate the news for the next year and a half, at least. It's going to. And Trump can't really spend too much time getting his message out on how he's going to make America great again. Never mind the other Republican candidates, you know? I'll just give you one example. Yesterday, I was about to do a hit, and we were going to talk about DeSantis and the interview that I did with him last Friday, the news that was made. Of course, that got all thrown out the window. Right. Mm -hmm. Trump just got indicted a third time. And this time it's the big McGill of January 6th that the Democrats have been salivating over. We didn't talk about DeSantis. It's just impossible for these other candidates to get any airtime. And that's, I think, also part of the Democrats plan. They know very well. You tell me what you think, but they know very well Trump's numbers keep going up as they indict him more. They've seen that. Mm -hmm. They're not dumb. You can say a lot of things about them, but that they're dumb is not one of them. Um, They like that. They're planning on driving his numbers up in the primary process. They believe he's beatable. They believe he's the only one, I think, that they can beat. They may or may not be right, but I'm talking about what they think. They think, get him across the line with the GOP nomination process, and then we'll crush him in the general because all these trials are going to be happening. Right. That could be part of their calculus. Um, I think that I know a lot of people believe that I haven't really thought about it that much. Um, But, you know, this is going to be not just the top story in in the general, but to your point, the primary as well. But for Republican voters, how the candidates, the primary Republican presidential candidates respond is going to be very important. And you already see blowback from some of the tepid responses that we saw yesterday uh, from Governor DeSantis, Mike Pence basically endorsing this indictment. Yes. So it it won't just be, um, you know, sucking the air out of other candidates trying to get their message uh, uh, across. This will be the clarifying issue between Donald Trump and all of these candidates, how they respond 
what their plan is, how they react um, uh, to all of this news, death by a thousand cuts, as I said, not necessarily death, just thousand cuts yeah. um, will be uh, very it's, it's a, like to Republican voters. It's such a no brainer. You don't have to endorse anything Trump did around January 6th in order to say mm-hmm. this is a BS legal prosecution. As I was saying to my earlier guest, this is a political matter. It's for you to decide as a voter, Julie, for me to decide as a voter. Do I think that this is a deal breaker between me and Donald Trump or don't I? This is not criminal. There, It is lawfare that they're using against him. Same as you've seen done against so many of these J6 defendants who, OK, yes, some of them broke the law and should be held accountable. But the sentences, as you point out, with this judge, she's on her own imposing longer sentences than even the prosecution wanted in these cases, Mm -hmm. which nobody else would be going to jail for if it didn't involve the January 6th set of facts. That's right. And another um, article that I have on my sub stack that people should read and prepare for, I'm not so sure that Jack Smith will pursue it now, but if he is charged with seditious conspiracy, and he really could do this based on the obstruction um, allegation, is seeking pretrial detention for Donald Trump. The next big bombshell, aside from additional indictments, will be what sort of release conditions will special counsel Jack Smith ask for in this case or future indictments? I mean, Megan, I've seen men held in jail for over a year simply based on being charged with obstruction of an official proceeding and a few misdemeanor counts. So there is not just case precedent. But Chief Judge Beryl Howell in February of 2021 handed down what is basically special no bail rules that apply only to January 6th defendants. And I talk about that in my piece. Jack Smith has all the ammo he needs to go to Tanya Chutkin and ask either to detain Donald Trump awaiting trial. And if anyone thinks that's far fetched, just watch Jack Smith's ridiculous statement yesterday, Um, but also could put very strict release conditions on him, home detention, home confinement, a curfew, travel uh, limitations, wearing a monitoring device. This is also where I believe, not just with this indictment, but certainly future indictments, if it is seditious conspiracy, um, that Jack Smith will would, would ask for and he would get before this judge. This summer, big box retailers are seeking a massive big government handout from Congress, paid for by consumers, smaller financial institutions, community banks, and local credit unions. That's according to the Electronics Payment Coalition, a sponsor of today's episode. It's called the Credit Card Competition Act, aka the Big Box Bill. Mega retailers are in favor of it, but the Electronics Payment Coalition is not. They say this big box bill would actually transfer billions from consumers to retailers, through eliminating popular credit card rewards programs, weakening cybersecurity protections, and reducing overall access to credit for people who need it most. You can visit stopthebigboxbaitandswitch.com to learn more. That's stopthebigboxbaitandswitch.com. The link is in the description. Learn more, and if you want to help them, tell your legislator to stand up to the retail giants and to support consumers and small businesses. Hey, thanks so much for watching. If you like what you just saw, hit the subscribe button for more clips and full episodes.